Hey Piscatorians, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little different, no cooking or fishing. Uh, yesterday on Instagram, um, I asked if there's interest in a how-to video on making squid jigs and uh, got a lot of positive feedback. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, living in Washington, uh, we do get a, uh, a market grade squid here in the Puget Sound, uh, typically in the fall from uh, September through December. Uh, so it's a great activity to do from the piers. Uh, hope to film some videos on that later this year. Uh, but today, while we're at home, I'm going to show you how to make some squid jigs. That way you can save money because they're pretty expensive in the stores. You're looking at anywhere from, you know, six to ten bucks a jig. Uh, once you buy the equipment to do it, you can make them a whole lot cheaper. And today we're going to show you how. Alright guys, so as far as squid jigs go, um, you're going to have a weighted jig like this. Uh, this particular one's a, uh, a half ounce jig, glows in the dark. Then above that, you'll typically put uh, one to two, even possibly three jigs. I believe in the Puget Sound here, you can have four jigs at once. Um, but I use non-weighted jigs. Uh, this one is a glow-in-the-dark one using stacker beads. Um, this one is uh, glow-in-the-dark with uh, also a clear uh, green body. This is using a what's called a spaghetti bead. Uh, you can get those at say shipwreck beads or any bead store uh, look up spaghetti bead online and uh, this is the one we're going to tie today first um, not going to tie the uh, stacker beads one but this is um, you know one of the products put by max it glows in the dark and uh, you can buy those at sport co sportsman's warehouse and their lure making accessory area um, so first one we're going to show you is uh, this lightweight one a um, couple tools you're going to need uh, first is a, uh, a bobbin. You can get that at any uh, fly tying shop. Um, that is uh, about 10 bucks. And then I use, uh, you know, size 200 thread. Getting low, you're gonna have to buy some new ones. Um, you need a pair of uh, clippers uh, to uh, cut the wire shaft off at the end. You're gonna need some round bend pliers. Um, I get these from Jan's Netcraft online. I wanna say they're about 15, 16. All right, so the first one we're gonna make is this lightweight one. Um, basically, you're gonna use three glow-in-the-dark four millimeter beads. Uh, I get the SMI brand, they're cheap, like 70 cents a bag. And then spaghetti beads, um, which you can get at uh, shipwreck beads or, or just look for them online. Um, so let's go through that and show you how to do it. Um, first thing you're going to need is a squid jig hook. Uh, this one happens to be a 20 millimeter um, squid jig hook. I get those off eBay. Um, next thing you're going to need is a wire shaft. I buy inline spinner wire. Um, I get it from Jan's Netcraft. Um, this one here happens to be a 3 inch. Uh, it's a pretty light wire. Um, but you don't have to worry about that with, with squid. Um, it's going to be plenty durable for the application. Um, and it's pretty simple. Um, basically the first thing that we're going to do is take one of our uh, four and a half millimeter glow beads, slide it down like so. Then you're going to slide your squid jig hook on. Do another four and a half millimeter bead. Whoops. And that's going flying. All right. Let's put that on there like so. Then we need to pick out the uh, spaghetti bead. Um, just have a bag of some here. Uh, we'll do a red one for today. Then you're going to slide um, the red bead on like that. Add one more four and a half millimeter bead, or four millimeter bead rather. And then you're going to need these interesting looking pliers. These are a, a wire bending plier. So basically, you're going to go about right here. And then you can see it creates kind of an L shape. And then you kind of want to straighten this up. And then, kind of where it's at a 90, just get it to fold over like that. So you kind of get a downward angle on it. Then you're just going to bend it around the plier 
uh, to the back side like so and twist it down towards the bead all right so if you can see that that's as easy as it is to make a jig now you see you have that tag end you're gonna need some flush cutters um, get as close as you can still leaves a little bit of an end um, but then you'll see you'll have a, a loop to tie on here and then you have this bottom loop that's part of the spinner wire and um, that's nice because then you can tie you know about a six to ten inch piece of mono or braid whatever you like to use and attach your second jig to it um, so yeah that will you know you can see it moves a little bit but you don't gotta worry about that it's not gonna come apart uh, they're super strong and uh, never had any problem I've had you know doubles triples sometimes quadruples not very often um, and they hold up just fine um, so that's how you make one of the lightweight jigs if you wanted to do say a heavier jig um, I'll use water gremlin uh, rubber core sinkers like this um, first thing you want to do is just rip the uh, rubber core right out of there like so <laughs> I do that on camera and then it doesn't want to cooperate there we go um, but you go ahead and just rip that out now you'll see you'll have this big opening um, if you have a vise at home put a little electric tape around it vise it up um, I've kind of already did that for us and uh, as you can see it, it closes it right up and uh, kind of leaves us an open hole and then um, you have a couple choices with the bodies um, you can uh, paint them with uh, a CS coating um, or you can powder coat them. Um, I like to powder coat them with uh, Protec uh, Glow in the Dark. Um, I used a, a pink Glow in the Dark. It just leaves for a hard finish, but again, you can paint them. Uh, if you paint them, I would definitely do like a base paint of white and then do the glow over that. That way it just makes that glow last a little bit longer. Um, but that's basically a jig body ready to go. Um, and then uh, you're going to use a little bit longer wire. Uh, again, uh, you get these at Jan's Netcraft, um, 25 to a package for a couple bucks. Um, this is the one we're going to use here. Uh, but we're going to use a lot bigger um, squid jig hook for this one. Uh, this is a, a 35 millimeter uh, size. And then you're going to use a um, 6 millimeter glow in the dark bead. Um, you're going to slide that on first if we were building the jig, but, um, and you could build the jig straight like this, but I like to add a little extra to it. And so that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, I take some Mylar tubing. Um, the one I like to use is called FlexiCord. You can buy this at Sportsman's Warehouse, um, any fly shop. They have it in different colors. Uh, this happens to be, be the pearl one. And, um, I use a 3 8 inch for the, uh, bigger three-quarter size weight and uh, stuff's not cheap but uh, has a good you know iridescent finish to it and so basically what I'm gonna do is just cut this with my scissors and we'll set that aside and then it's kinda like a, a finger trap if you will um, you just open it up here and it'll kind of go right around like you you can see that there it'll go right around the uh, weight and then the next thing you want to do is have a, a bobbin that you can get from any fly tying shop um, I got uh, size 200 thread in there and you're just gonna go ahead and pinch that down wrap it around like so I'm sorry if you can see that there And then give it a couple half hitches. Kind of hard to do uh, on the camera. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me get a little more line out. But basically, you're just gonna want to half hitch it once, twice, three times. Pull it tight, and then go ahead and cut that. Hey, buddy. And that's the that's ambush here <laughs> making some noise. 
Okay, so you can see how we have that tied on. Now you're just going to go ahead and push the weight all the way to the, the end like so and just give it a little, not quite a twist, but just pinch it down and take your line and then wrap it right tight up against the uh, butt end and as you can see, kind of looks like a little piece of candy. Um, and we're ready to half hitch that. And once, twice, three times. Pull it tight. And then uh, that is a uh, jig body wrapped in some mylar tubing. Now that's a three quarter ounce. And you can stop right there and, and, and leave it just like this and it's still gonna glow through. But I like to add uh, a UV seal coat. Um, but I'm also gonna uh, kind of do this in two steps. I'm gonna show you uh, one more body. Okay, and then the other um, squid jigs I make are half ounce ones. And I actually use uh, the bullet weights like you use in bass fishing. And um, you just get the uh, quarter ounce bullet weights. And I went ahead and uh, powder coated those. Uh, this one I'm gonna make is uh, a two-tone one. As far as the body goes, I'm doing a standard glow and a pink glow. Um, this pink glow actually does glow kind of a, a reddish glow as to where this one does that normal green glow. And again, uh, all you're gonna do is uh, Put one of these on your jig wire shaft like so, put the other one the opposite direction, and then um, take your mylar, put it over the top, just like so. That same process. And tying it like so. We're gonna do our half hitch. Hopefully I got enough line to complete this one but uh, do our series of half hitches there tighten that up come around these scissors are getting a little dull on me I probably need to get some new ones but see if we can't get those to cooperate and cut for us then uh, just flip that around or push it forward kind of tighten that up like so and then Take your bobbin, wrap this side. I go kind of back and forth a few times. Uh, just kind of build that thread base up on each end. And that's ready for the whole whip finish of half hitches. Again, one, two, three. Okay, we'll cut that off. And if you wanted, like I said earlier, um, you could take those bodies and then start to tie a, a squid jig up. Um, but I add another step. I bring out the old fashioned solo cup. And then uh, this is the seal coat I use. It actually has a UV blast but it's the CS uh, seal coat. And um, basically what we're gonna do here, hope I don't make a mess on the table. I have to answer to my wife. But uh, basically what we're gonna do is take this stuff here and just paint the body like so. I just spilled some, but we'll we'll clean that up before it dries. My wife will never know unless she watches this video, which she probably will. But even then, as long as I clean it up, she'll be okay with it. So you don't want to put too much on where it's dripping off, um, but you want to make sure you coat it, and that's going to give it a nice UV coating, and also just kind of you know seals it up like like the coating implies and and uh, kind of allows that mylar to adhere to the 
the jig head itself. And then you're just gonna set that on your your um, solo cup like so and, and let it dry overnight. And we're gonna go ahead and do that with um, this one as well. And uh, you'll see the, the finish kind of changes as you're painting it. Uh, it gets saturated, brings the, the color through, but this dries more or less pretty clear And it doesn't, uh, you know, harm the glow effect at all. I think with the UV in it, it can only probably help things out. But, uh, yeah, so that's what that's going to look like. And I'll set those aside to dry and, and, and tie those up tomorrow. Um, but I want to show you um, tying the bigger jig. Uh, we're going to do the uh, one of the half ounce ones to completion real quick. Um, these are some I did the other day. So this is what one looks like dried. It's two-tone. I'm going to rip a piece of this paper towel off wipe this seal coat up so I don't get in trouble. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is um, go ahead and uh, it, it'll kind of glue itself to the shaft a little bit and then you just pull it right out like so and then take your scissors Cut the ends off. Okay. And you're going to take your 35 millimeter jig hook. Oh, first thing, skipping a step here. We want to drop the 6 millimeter bead. Glow in the dark. You can use whatever color you like. Um, but I think, you know, glow never help, uh, never hurts. So put it on there. Slide that guy down like so. Um, and then you know you can pick whatever end you want to have uh, closest to the jig hook. But you just slide that back through like so. And then I use these little uh, metal chrome plated cones that you can get from the fly shop or Sportsman's Warehouse. They sell them in I think. 20 packs or 25 packs. Um, I use that just because I think it looks a little nicer. Uh, you can use a bead if you want. Um, then we're going to go back to our pliers. Um, for the larger size ones, I use the little bit bigger uh, hole. Again, I go about right there, squeeze it, then bring it down and squeeze it again. Then we're going to bend the wire straight to the back and then just twist uh, downward with your tag end of the wire. That's going to tighten everything up. And then that's kind of what you're left with. And just come and take your. Uh, snips and I just kind of cover my hand over it because this part will shoot off otherwise and yeah there you go that's your squid jig and so that's basically the process of doing the weighted squid jigs and the lightweight squid jigs um, I find this half ounce size to be great for fishing on the piers here around Puget Sound um, you know I've set you know these guys about six inches apart and uh, I'll do a, a usually a squid jig hook trio. Um, if you're fishing off your boat, sometimes you get uh, into the current or what have you, and you need a little bit more than a half ounce because you're going to get swept out. Um, what you can do, like I've done on this jig here, is uh, go ahead and add a dual lock snap, and then you can uh, take it and and snap it and then you can just add weight you can add like a cannonball sinker so easier to do when you have it uh, off the camera but just hook it up like that pinch it back together now you've just added you know another three quarters of an ounce you can do that with one ounce 
it's a vertical presentation so it's not going to screw things up um, but that can help you drop it a little deeper off the boat and uh, yeah I hope you guys liked today's video remember uh, hit that like button if you did uh, also uh, please subscribe to the channel and if you have any comments or questions uh, feel free to uh, ask them in the uh, comment section below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can and as always guys tight lines thanks for watching